Yes. Is that good enough to stand here? Uh, yeah, go back and go this way. That's good. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu bihi wa nasta'hdihi wa nasta'gfiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار The respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all May he subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from each and every one of us اللهم آمين May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in piety and righteousness and may he subhanahu wa ta'ala Grant us tawfiq and ikhlas sincerity. Uh, brothers and sisters, every single act of worship that we do leads to something more. Every single act of worship that we do leads to something more. And as we reach the end of this blessed month of Ramadan, we need to remind ourselves what is this month supposed to give us? What is this month supposed to give us? And subhanAllah, Ramadan has been a chance and a great opportunity to train us for prayer, for fasting, for charity, for repentance, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for taqwa, and at the same time, also Ramadan also is the, the school of mannerism. Ramadan is the school of akhlaq. Ramadan is a school for the improvement, improvement of our moral and spiritual character. And subhanAllah, if we ask this question to each and every one of us, so what did you do with this Ramadan? What did you do this Ramadan? What is the number one Ramadan good deed that you did observe? What is the thing that you need to do the most? Is it the reading of the Quran, the recitation of the Quran? Is it the performance of tahajjud and taraweeh prayer? Is it the charity? And all of people, when they come to think about the best deeds, we always think of devotional deeds, which means we have to do something hard in order for us to feel that we have achieved something. So for example, fasting and breaking the fast, at the end of the day, this is indeed a great achievement and there is no question about it. And also subhanAllah to perform the taraweeh prayer or to spend the most of your night 
in salah and in dua. Even though you could be, you could go and be in bed because you have work in the morning. But subhanallah, you choose to pray and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is another great act of worship. And also you give money for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you give more than what we usually do throughout the year, another great act of worship. But if you, the respected brothers and sisters, you ask me, what is number one Ramadan good deed? What is number one Ramadan good deed, in my humble opinion, is the improvement of one's akhlaq is the improvement of one's manners. And why is this? Why I'm saying this? Because subhanAllah, it seems like that many people during the days of Ramadan, especially when they get hungry, then be, they become angry so easily. And they lose temper so fast. And many times we hear people say, leave me alone, I'm fasting. Do not let me go off on you. We have heard this so many times. And the question is, why does it have to be this way? Why does it have to be this way? Why Ramadan becomes a justification for so many people to be rude during the blessed month of Ramadan, subhanAllah. Akhlaq is the essence of the religion of Islam. Actually, all the pillars of Islam revolve around akhlaq. The entire religion, is based upon akhlaq, the respected brothers and sisters. And subhanAllah, um, if you look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet, peace be upon him, described his entire mission. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described his entire mission in a very short phrase. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَا I was only sent for one purpose, to fulfill one goal. And that goal is to to perfect the most beautiful character of the human beings. That was the mission of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it by two things, by exemplifying it in his own uh, behavior, the way he carried himself to the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself testified to the beauty of his character in the Quran. He said, وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You are indeed in an exalted standard of character. And in addition to that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it by way of instructing his companions and preaching sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So akhlaq, has a great status in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what I'm going to focus today, I'm going to focus today on just two things are very important. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you with these two attributes, with these two akhlaq, then indeed you have benefited greatly from the month of Ramadan. And number one, number one is actually one of the attributes of Allah. And also the second one is one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you have them, then you are blessed in so many ways. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, مَنْ أُعْطِيَ حَظَّهُ مِنَ الرِّفْقِ فَقَدْ أُعْطِيَ حَظَّهُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ وَمَنْ حُرِمَ حَظَّهُ مِنَ الرِّفْقِ فَقَدْ حُرِمَ حَظَّهُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ The first one is gentleness, is kindness, soft softness, politeness. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, whoever has been given a share of gentleness, so indeed has been given a share of good. And whoever is denied or has been deprived or has been denied of a share of gentleness, then so indeed has been deprived of a share of good. SubhanAllah gentleness, the respected brothers and sisters in Islam is the key to Allah in attainment for our goals. Whatever goals you have, whatever goals you have, a lot of people think that sometimes you need to be tough. You need to be difficult. You need to be harsh 
in order for you to get what you want. But actually, it's not true. It's not true. You can get what you want if you are gentle and if you are polite. Subhanallah, you look at it, how many relationships in our homes are suffering because we are difficult with one another. How many marriages, how many fights, how many grudges, how many arguments, subhanallah, are built simply because there is a lack of gentleness with one another. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ بِأَهْلِ بَيْتٍ خَيْرًا أَدْخَلَ عَلَيْهِمُ الرِّفْقِ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desires goodness for a family, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for a family, then he subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them gentleness with one another. He subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them gentleness with one another. Another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, إِنَّ اللَّهَ رَفِيقٌ يُحِبُّ الرِّفْقَ فِي الْأَمْرِ كُلِّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gentle and he loves the gentleness in all matters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gentle and he subhanahu wa ta'ala loves gentleness in all matters. So kindness and gentleness are fundamental character traits that whose absence in an individual may lead to various sorts of evil. And this kindness must extend to everyone and everything with whom the individual interacts with his spouses or family, relatives, children, society at large. It is a great attribute. It is a great khuluq that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, حُرِّمَ عَلَى النَّارِ كُلُّ هَيِّنٍ لَيِّنٍ سَهْلٍ قَرِيبٍ مِنَ النَّاسِ The Prophet said, forbidden upon the fire. Forbidden, forbidden upon the fire is every easy going, flexible, easy to deal with person, subhanAllah. So beautiful. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so gentle. So gentleness is one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the essence of gentleness is in two matters. Number one, you have positiveness and calmness in our words, in the words we choose. In the words we articulate the respect to brothers and sisters, and also you have gentleness in our actions. You have also gentleness in our actions. A lot of people think that if that person is, is gentle, this is a sign of weakness. This is not true. A person can be gentle. A person can be gentle and can still demand the rights. A person can be gentle and they can still get their point across. It is a great ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is subhanallah, the beauty of the month of Ramadan. One number one goal, in my humble opinion, is the improvement of one's akhlaq, is the improvement of one's akhlaq. Most of the time, we focus so much on rituals, but we do not focus on what the rituals are meant to accomplish. Sometimes we distinguish a successful Ramadan from uh, that's not a successful Ramadan by how much Quran we have recited, how many taraweeh we have prayed. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, مَن لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةِ فِي أَنْ يَدَعْ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ If a person does not give up false speech and acting upon it, that Allah is not in need of him, giving up his food and drink. And he also Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us perhaps a fasting person gets nothing out of his fast but hunger and thirst. So this is number one, to be soft, to be polite. And when you have this, then you are, subhanAllah, have one of the beautiful attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah Azza wa Jal is gentle and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves gentleness in all matter, in every single aspect, but especially, especially, need in your relationship with your family, the respected brothers and sisters in Islam. The people that most benefit or the, the, the most benefit the most from your akhlaq are your family members, number one, especially your wife, especially your husband, especially your children. Because if you are able 
to implement this and to live by it, then 100% you will be able to take it outside. Most of the time, we are so nice outside to people, to strangers, and we are very tough, very harsh, very difficult, very stern, very rigid when it comes to the closest people to us. So be very careful. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Khayrukum, Khayrukum li ahli. The best among you are those who are the best to their families. Inna Allah rafiqun yuhibbu rifqa fil amri kulli. Another hadith again, the Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or the Prophet told us, when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants good, or desires goodness for a family, he gives them gentleness with each other. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Allah told this Prophet in the Quran, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِهِ By the mercy of Allah, you have dealt with them gently. Have you been severe or harsh-hearted? They would have broken away from you. So forgive them, consult them, this is, this is with everyone. Most of the time we think that I will be gentle with those who are gentle with me. I will be nice with those who are nice with me. No, you must be gentle with everyone, whether they are nice to you or not. And this is one of the ways of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is rifq. And the opposite of rifq is to be stern, to be angry, to be tempered, to, to, be, to be rigid. This is the opposite. And you do not want to possess or have any of these qualities they respect the brothers and sisters number two uh, from the, the the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam told us every religion every religion has a hallmark and i want you to listen to this carefully every religion has a hallmark has an essential uh, distinguishing uh, what they call quality and the whole mark of Islam, the whole mark of the religion of Islam is what? Is haya, modesty, shyness, or bashfulness. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna li kulli deenin khuluqa, wa khuluqul Islam in haya. Every religion has a particular manner, and the particular manner of Islam is haya. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, Inna mimma adraka nasu مِنْ كَلَامِ النُّبُوَّةِ الْأُولَى إِذْ لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاصْنَعْ مَا شِئْ From the words of the previous prophets that people still find are, if you have no shame, then do as you wish. So actually, Haya was part of the legacy of every single prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is as if the first prophet of Allah, Azza wa Jalla Adam, had made this statement and then it continued to be passed on until the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. إِذْ لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاصْنَعْ مَا شَيْءٍ And that is true. If you have no shame, then do as you wish. If you have no haya, then you will say whatever you want, and you will say it the way you want, and you will do whatever you want, and you will do it the way you want. So haya is the most important or one of the most important factors that keeps a person away from committing a lewd or, or sinful act. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, Al-Haya'u wal-Imanu Qurana' Iza rufi'a ahaduhuma rufi'a al-akhar He said, faith and modesty, faith and shyness, these two things, are two companions. Are two companions that go together. They are inseparable. They are connected. If one of them is lifted, the other one will be lifted. If haya, modesty is alive, then faith is alive. If haya is missing, then iman is missing. Subhanallah. If haya is missing, then iman is missing. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that Haya does not appear in anything except that it adds to its beauty, except that it makes it beautiful. And Haya or shyness does not appear in anything except that it makes it ugly, it makes it defective, it blemishes it. So Haya 
is also one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith says, Inna Allah hayyun kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is full of haya. Allah azza wa jal is full of concealment subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran subhanallah told us about the haya of a woman, the haya of the, the wife of Musa alayhi salam. Before she came his wife, and we all know the story of Musa alayhi salam with the two sisters when he helped them to get the water and they went home and one of them came back to Musa alayhi salam telling him that my father wants to talk to you. And the Quran described, فَجَاءَتْهُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَا She came to Musa alayhi salam with full of haya, full of modesty, full of shyness, subhanAllah, عَلَى اسْتِحْيَا meaning not عَلَى haya, meaning in everything, the way she walks, the way she talks, the way she behaves. Haya is much, much more than putting just a scarf on one's head. Haya is beyond this and much, much more than that. When she came to Musa alayhi salam and she requested him to go and talk to her father, Musa alayhi salam requested her to walk behind him. Just think of it. He said, you can walk behind me and just navigate me. Just tell me the way. We are a people who do not look at the backsides of women. Haya is beautiful in a man, and Haya is beautiful in a woman. Haya is beautiful in a man, in a woman. And this is what we learn from the month of Ramadan. Haya before Allah Azza wa Jal, this is the most important thing. Because during the month of Ramadan, throughout the day, you are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not eating nor drinking for one purpose, for one reason, and only one reason. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbidden it. And subhanallah, if you can develop this, if you can have this, develop this in your heart and mind, and carry this over to the rest of the year, then you will be able to control your desires and also combat your actions. So, so haya before Allah and haya subhanallah before the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We live the respected brothers and sisters in a time that shamelessness is everywhere. And sometimes subhanallah, we're not sensitive to things that we used to be sensitive before because we see it in front of us every single day. The first time you see it, you say Astaghfirullah, the next day, the next year, the next month, or the next week, then you know longer sensitive to it. It does not bother you anymore. And that's why it's very important that one of the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma ja'al fi sam'i noora, wa fi basari noora, wa fi qalbi noora, oh Allah, place light in my sight, light in my hearing, light in my heart, light on my right, on my left, above me, under me, in front of me, behind me. So you can only see by the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you are able to achieve this during the month of Ramadan, you work in your akhlaq, and this is the question. Do not limit uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, successful Ramadan from not a successful Ramadan simply because you read the Quran from cover to cover twice or you prayed 20 rakahs of taraweeh. By the way, this is the easiest part of the month of Ramadan. Even kids can do that. Seven years old, they can fast. Seven years old, they even can read Quran. Uh, this is the easiest part of fasting. But if you really, truly want to benefit from this blessed month of Ramadan, then you need to check your relationship with your family, with your wife, with your husband, with your children. A lot of people, subhanAllah, I was surprised when I found a lot of people, a lot of family issues during the month of Ramadan. And I came to know that subhanAllah Ramadan becomes a justification for so many people to be rude. SubhanAllah, it should be the, two, the, the complete total opposite. Ramadan is a time to improve your akhlaq. That's the time. This is the time. This is the time to, to learn to be gentle, to be soft, to be polite, and to have haya before Allah and haya before the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of Haya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of Haya. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed by a man from the Ansar, from the Ansar, from the people of Medina, and he was talking to his brother, but he was rebuking him, right? Uh, like, because in his view, he was acting with so much haya. He was acting, he was, he like, uh, too much shyness. He, he shies too much. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Dah, leave him be, leave him be. فَإِنَّ الْحَيَاءَ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ Indeed, haya is part of faith. Haya is part of faith. Some people sometimes see parents, oh, my son is too much shy. He doesn't talk too much. It's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. Leave him be for haya. It is part of faith. الْحَيَاءُ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ وَالْإِيمَانُ فِي الْجَنَّةِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, haya, modesty, Huh? Or shyness is part of Iman, and Iman takes you to Jannah. But uh, uh, and the shamelessness is of uh, wickedness, and wickedness can lead a person to the hellfire. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept it from all of us. May Allah grant us safety. May Allah grant us afwa and afia. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala grant us the the reward, the full reward of Laylatul Qadr. May Allah make us among those who catch. That blessed night of Al-Qadr. Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anna. You Allah, you are afu. You love to forgive. You love to overlook. So forgive us. Forgive us. Pardon us. Shower us with your mercy and blessing. Ya Allah, protect us from this plague. Ya Allah, allow us to go back to them. Your message to your houses once again. Allow us to pray in jama'ah behind our imams. Ya Allah, give us. Ya Allah, bless us and re remove that plague from us so we can open the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once again, Allahumma ameen. Respected brothers and sisters, just a reminder that tonight, inshallah ta'ala, for Islamic society of Delaware, I know some people are joining us right now, they're not from Delaware, but tonight at 9 sharp, 9 p.m. inshallah ta'ala, we have a special guest speaker, Imam Wissam Sharif, and inshallah ta'ala tonight, we have our virtual fundraiser for the Islamic Society of Delaware in Newark. So inshallah ta'ala, make sure that you um, uh, sharp at nine o'clock because the program will start at nine. And we request all the brothers and sisters inshallah to donate generously. This is the month of sadaqah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khayra. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.